Good evening and welcome to the big quiz at Seamus O'Donnell's this Wednesday evening. In the news this week, a man in France managed to blow up part of his house whilst trying to swat a fly using an electric fly swat. He destroyed his kitchen, burned his hand, and it's unclear what happened to the fly. We found out this week that the wildfires in California were, st were started when a incendiary device from a gender reveal party went wrong. But on a lighter note, the Kardashians program, Keeping Up With The Kardashians, is set to end next year. Now you're up to date. One last thing. I would like to leave you with this week's leave you. It's just starting. What am I saying? One other thing to mention today is this week's pickup line of the week. You remind me of a Terry's chocolate orange because you look like you need unwrapping and banging on the table. Now you're up to date. It's time for the quiz. Okay, so this week we have You're a Quizard Harry. The Spin Doctor and the Twerps are here as well. Round one this week is General Knowledge. Let's see if the winning team can beat last week's total of 54. General Knowledge is round one, starting with question number one. Number one, who was the host of the ITV game show Don't Try This at Home? Was it Claudia Winkleman, Zoe Ball or Davina McCall? Who was the host of the ITV game show Don't Try This at Home? Was it Claudia Winkleman, Zoe Ball or Davina McCall? Question number two. In which year was Channel 5 first broadcast? Was it 1995, 1996 or 1997? In which year was Channel 5 first broadcast? Was it 1995, 1996 or 1997? Question number three. Which US city was most devastated by Hurricane Katrina in 2005, Orlando, Houston or New Orleans? Which US city was most des des devastated by Hurricane Katrina in 2005? Was it Orlando, Houston or New Orleans? Question number four. In which year did the Berlin Wall come down? 1985, 1987 or 1989? In which year did the Berlin Wall come down? 1985, 1987 or 1989? Question number five. The assassination of a man named Franz Ferdinand triggered the start of the First World War in 1914. But which country was he the Archduke of? Was it Austria, Germany or Serbia? Question number five. The assassination of a man named Franz Ferdinand triggered the start of the First World War in 1914. But which country was he the Archduke of? Was it Austria, Germany or Serbia? Question number six. Which world-famous British company was founded in Birmingham in 1824? Was it Rolls-Royce? 
Cadbury's or Tesco. Which world famous British company was founded in Birmingham in 1824? Was it Rolls Royce, Cadbury's or Tesco? Question number seven. In which two centuries did Galileo live? Was it the 14th and 15th, 15th and 16th, or 16th and 17th? In which two centuries did Galileo live? 14th and 15th, 15th and 16th, or 16th and 17th? Question number eight. Of these, who is the tallest? Kevin Hart, Bruno Mars, or Tom Cruise? Who is the tallest? Kevin Hart, Bruno Mars, or Tom Cruise? Question number nine. Which of these definitions best matches the word abscond, tell off, beat up, or run away? Which of these definitions best matches the word abscond? Is it tell off, beat up, or run away? And question number 10. What does USB stand for? Is it Universal Serial Bus, Universal, universal Separation Bolt, or Universal Singular Bridge? What does USB stand for? Is it Universal Serial Bus, Universal Separation Bolt, or Universal Singular Bridge? Good evening to Team Not A Clue. Here we go with a recap of round one. Question number one. Who was the host of the ITV game show Don't Try This At Home? Was it Claudia Winkleman, Zoe Ball or Davina McCall? Question number two. In what year was Channel 5 first broadcast? Was it 1995? 1996 or 1997. Question number three. Which US city was most devastated by Hurricane Katrina in 2005? Orlando, Houston or New Orleans? Question number four. In which year did the Berlin Wall come down? Is it 1985, 1987 or 1989? Question number five. The assassination of a, man, of a man named Franz Ferdinand triggered the start of the First World War in 1914. But which country was he Archduke of? Was it Austria, Germany or Serbia? Question number six. Which world-famous British company was founded in Birmingham in 1824? Was it Rolls-Royce, Cadbury's or Tesco? Question number seven. In which two centuries did Galileo live? 14th and 15th, 15th and 16th or 16th and 17th? Question number eight. Of these people, who is the tallest? Kevin Hart, Bruno Mars or Tom Cruise? Question number nine. Which of these definitions best matches the word abscond? Tell off, beat up or run away? And number ten. What does USB stand for? Universal serial bus, universal, univer, universal separation bolt or universal shingular bridge?
Okay, here we go with the answers to round number one. The presenter of the program was Davina McCall. Question number two, Channel 5, 1997. Number three was New Orleans. Number four was 1989. Question number five was Austria. Number six, the company was Cadbury's. Number seven, Galileo was in the 16th and 17th century. Number eight, the tallest is Tom Cruise. Number nine, abscond means run away. And number 10, USB is universal serial bus. So on that round, how did you do? I think uh, team not a clue. We're a little bit distracted with their dinner. But I'm sure they got 10 out of 10. You're a quiz at Harry. 9 out of 10. Spin Dr. Judith, what did you get on that round? Eight out of ten on for Judith. And the twerps. Eight out of ten as well. Team Not A Clue, are you scoring that round? Not sure if she's scoring that round, but at the end of round one, your acquisit oh! Harry. Oh! That would be bare. Your acquisit Harry has got in the lead with nine out of ten, followed by the spin doctor and the terps twerps both on eight out of ten. Now, round two. This is the animal round. They are all animal related questions and answers. Question number 11. What type of dogs are commonly kept by Eskimos? Uh, team Not A Clue are not playing along. They're just playing for fun and just lurking in the background this evening. Question number 11. What type of dogs are commonly kept by Eskimos? Now the quiz is playing down in the bar this evening. If you're playing along, you can uh, ask for a pen and paper. Uh, or if you'd like to join in on the chat, uh, find us on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. Join in on the chat in there and I shall see you pop up on my screen. Question number 12. If the cheetah is the fastest thing on four legs, what is the fastest on two legs? Question number 12. If a cheetah is the fastest thing on four legs, what is the fastest on two? Question number 13. What is the national bird of New Zealand? Number 13, what is the national bird of New Zealand? Question number 14. In the TV show, what kind of animal was Gentle Ben? In the TV show, what kind of animal was Gentle Ben? Question number 15. The body of the Egyptian Sphinx was based on which animal? The body of the Egyptian Sphinx was based on which animal? Question number 16. What colour are the spots on a common ladybird?
Question number 17. What is a female donkey called? Number 17. What is a female donkey called? Question number 18. What is the distinguishing feature of a Manx cat? What is the distinguishing feature of a Manx cat? Question number 19. The Chihuahua dog derives its name from a town in which country? The Chihuahua dog derives its name from a town in which country? And question number 20. Out of all of the animals in the Chinese horoscope, which comes last alphabetically? Out of all the animals in the Chinese horoscope, which comes last alphabetically? And here's the recap of round one. Question number 11. What type of dogs are commonly kept by Eskimos? Question number 12. If the cheetah is the fastest thing on four legs, what is the fastest on two? Question number 13. What is the national bird of New Zealand? Number 14, in the TV show, what kind of animal was Gentle Ben? Number 15, the body of the Egyptian Sphinx was based on which animal? Question number 16, what colour are the spots on the common ladybird? Question number 17. What is a female donkey called? Question number 18. What is the distinguishing feature of a Manx cat? Nineteen. The Chihuahua dog derives its name from a town in which country? And question number 20. Out of all the animal in the Chinese horoscope, which comes last alphabetically? Um, oh, there's a suggestion uh, from the twerps about quiet background music. Um, while I would quite like to be able to put some music on the background, there's some issues with copyright. Um, so if I were to put something that was copyrightable in the background, I would struggle to s keep the video online. Uh, the best I can do is the 10 minute intro and uh, my intro and outro. The intro and outro I'm lucky I can get away with, to be honest. It's only about 7 seconds, but uh, that's been uh, flagged up a couple of times already. I can just hum for you. Here we go with the answers. I sung that bit. Number 11, the dogs commonly associated with Eskimos are the Huskies. Number 12, the fastest thing on two legs is an ostrich. Number 13, the New Zealand national bird is the kiwi. Number 14 is a bear. Gentle Ben was a bear. Number 15, the body of a lion. Number 16, 
I don't remember what the question was. Number 16, the colour of the spots of a ladybird. Of course they're black. Number 17, a female donkey is a jenny. Number 18, the Manx cat has no tail. 19, the chihuahuas are from Mexico. And the animal that comes last alphabetically in the Chinese horoscope is the tiger. Rawr. So after that round, your Wizard Harry are on 17 out of 20. No extra points on this round. 17 out of 20 for the Spin Doctor and the Twerps. How much did you get on that round? While well, I just uh, wet the whistle. And also, because I'm streaming on uh, Facebook as well as on YouTube, Facebook will actually completely block the stream if you have copyrightable music in it. Like, why has life got to be so cruel? All I want to do is entertain. And having that bit of background music would really help. I really, I really wish I could. So we're now on to round three. Let's move closer to the camera. So we're on round three. This is Answer Smash. The way that this works, I am going to show you a picture and ask you a question. And I would like you to smush those two together to give me the answer that I'm looking for. If you get the picture... And only the picture, you get one point. If you get the answer to the question, and only the answer to the question, you get one point. If you put the answer and the question and you smush them together nicely, you can have two points. So here we go. Question number, what am I on? 21. Question number 21. Name the animal in the picture. And what is another name for, the, for a cordelia, cordiolum, which is the bacterial infection of an oil gland in the eyelid? So you thought those last two ones were really easy. What is that animal in the picture and what is another name for the hordeolum, which is a bacterial infection of an oil gland in the eyelid? What did I say? The, the results. 17 for your acquitted Harry and the spin doctors and bringing up the rear uh, are the twerps with 14. Question number 22. Name the character in the picture and... What is a device or enclosure designed to catch and ret retain something, typically by allowing entry but not exit, or by catching hold of a part of the body? And don't worry, if you feel like I'm going to go th past these questions too fast, I am going to do a recap. Um, if you would like any clues for any of these pictures or questions, if I can give them to you, as I'm going through the first round, if you send me a message on chat, let me know what question number you would like a clue for. I will try and give you a clue on the next pass. Number 23, name the character in the picture and what is a reduction or what is a reduction in or restriction on the availability of electrical power in a particular area known as? Number 24, what is that in the picture? And meaning always lawyer, this is the motto of the United States Marine Corps. Question number 25, who is that in the picture, I wonder? And what is a rapid surprise attack on an enemy by aircraft? Number 26, what is that uh, erection in the picture? And... The unicorn of the sea, a medium-sized tooth whale that possesses a large tusk from a protruding canine tooth. Number 27, name of the singer and a long upholstered seat for more than one person, typically with a back and arms. Number 28, name the character and French dish consisting of a roast duck with 
Birigard sauce. Bigger regard. Big Bigarade bigger sauce. Some sort of sauce. French dish cons French dish consisting of a roast duck with Bigarade sauce. Name the presenter and the regular presenter of the TV series MasterChef when it was first broadcast in 1990, who would also often ask, who would live in a house like this? And number 30. Name the city and what ad adjective describes a person who can use both hands equally well. How was that for you there? Let's go for the recap of round three. Starting with question number 21 again. Name the animal in the picture and another name for the for a hordeolum. I can't. Why do I do this to myself? Another name for a hordeolum, which is the bacterial infection of an oil gland in the eyelid. Like, there are no clues that I can give you for that one. Number twenty-two. Uh, say what you see, really, in the picture and a device or enclosure dis designed to catch and retain something. Maybe something like in the picture. Typically by allowing entry but not exit or by catching hold of a part of the body. Also in the picture. 23. Name the character. And a reduction, or, a reduction in or restriction on the availability of electrical power in a particular area. It is not the best friend of your electrical items that... Number 24, name the green stuff in the picture. Frequently these cutting and meaning always loyal. This is the motto of the U.S. Marine Corps. Twenty-five, name the singer in the picture. If you've been here before, you might know who that is. And a rapid surprise attack on an enemy by aircraft. I mean, if you haven't been here, you still might know who that is. Them hips don't lie. Number 26. Name the structure in the picture and what is the unicorn of the sea? A medium-sized toothed whale that possesses a large tusk from a protruding canine tooth. And who is the singer in the picture? picture and a long upholstered seat for more than one person typically with a back and arms now what clue can i give you do you need a clue for that one i can only give album titles i don't know it might be a bit ironic if i do 28 name the Character in the picture. I, oh, I nearly said something different there. Name the character in the picture and a French dish consisting of a roast duck with a bigarade sauce. I, I was googling earlier how to pronounce that, and in English, apparently, it's bigarade. In America, <laughs> bigarade. And um, number twenty-nine. Name the presenter. It was uh, the longest-running ITV weather presenter. And the regular presenter, or, and who is, different person, regular presenter of the TV series MasterChef when it was for, first broadcast in 1990. He was also known for asking, who would live in a house like this? I, I don't do impressions. And number 30. Oh, I, I didn't show you the picture, did I? Number 29. There it is again. Number 30, weather presenter, and who would live in a house like this? And number 30, name the city, and what adjective describes a person who can use both hands equally well? Number 
Must be a really easy picture round this week. Normally I get more, more more requests for clues. Whether that you're just not talking to me anymore. Question. Okay, here we go with the answers. Number 21 is a pig and the hordelium, hordeolium, 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 which is a bacterial infection of an oil gland, is a sty, which gives us pig sty. Number 22. The character in the picture was finger mouse and a device or enclosure designed to go. Oh, you just fell asleep. Thank you. A device or enclosure designed to catch and retain something, typically by allowing entry but not exit, is a trap, which gives us finger mouse trap. Number 23. In the picture, we have Charlie Brown. And the reduction or restriction on the availability of electrical power in a particular area is a brownout, which gives us the answer Charlie Brownout. Number 24. In the picture, we saw some grass. And the phrase always loyal, which is the motto of the United States Marine Corps, is Semper Fi or Semper Fidelis, which is Grass Semper Fi. Number 25, Shakira, Shakira. And this rapid surprise attack on the enemy by aircraft is an air raid, Shakira air raid. Number 26, the structure in the picture was a barn. The unicorn of the sea with a long protruding canine tooth is a narwhal. Which gives us the answer, barnawal. Question number 27. Is Alanis Morissette and the long upholstered seat for more than one person, typically with the back and arms, is a seti, which gives us Alana Morissetti. Can't be Alanis Morissofa because that wouldn't work. Number 28, the character is Scrooge McDuck. The French dish consisting of a roast duck with a bigarade sauce is duck à l'orange. Which gives us Scrooge McDuck à l'orange. Mmm, tasty. Number 29. The uh, weather presenter was Sean Lloyd. The presenter of the TV series MasterChef, who would live in a house like this, was Lloyd Grossman. Which gives us Sean Lloyd Grossman. I know you're going to complain that's not really smushed together, but it kind of is. And finally, number 30. The city is Amsterdam. People who can use their hands equally well are ambidextrous. Ambidambidextrous. Ooh, that's a good one. I like that one. I might have to write that one down. Remember that one for the quiz of the year. A recap of all my favourite answer smashes. So, how did you get on with that round? Did anyone smash the answer smashes and get 20 out of 20? Did you see what I did there? Aha. I've peaked, really, I have. Alex, did you remember to do two points for each of those questions if you got them right? Because otherwise you only got 10 out of that one. Did you only do half? Don't forget, it's one point for the picture, one point for the answer. And if you get them both right, it's two points per question. So there's a total of 20 points out of that round. Twerps, how did you do? Twenty-seven out of forty for your oh no, thank you. Thirty-seven out of forty for your acquisite habit. They got all ten questions correct. See, I, I did think when, when you said 27 out of 40, no, you can do better than that. You're smarter than that. Well, I thought you were smarter than that. I don't know. Maybe you're not. Spin Doctor out of 40, 32. And the twerps.
Excuse me. Drinking on the job, I know. 32 out of 40. So I've had a drink too. So at this point in the quiz, still in the lead, you're a quizzed Harry. And the twerps have bumped themselves back up from third place into joint second. We're, now we go on to the next round, which is, I think, round four. What am I on? Round four? Yeah, round four. So round four. You did. I'm sorry. I um, I forgot to look up. Round four uh, is international cuisine. Um, then, then there might be a similar question in this round. I don't know. Maybe. I knocked the microphone off the desk. Here we go. Uh, where are we? No, but, ooh. Oh, my mouse has stopped working. Number 31. What is the name of the Spanish soup served cold? Number 31, what is the name of the Spanish soup that is served cold? Uh, don't worry about spelling, you're the only ones that are going to see it, not me. Don't call it Simon. Number 32, what forms the base of the Indian dish raita? Raita? I don't know, the words in front of you, I have no idea how to pronounce it. R-A-I-T-A. Raita, raita? Anyone? You could write it phonetically for me. That would be greatly appreciated. Number 33. Which fish is the traditional ingredient of the Scandinavian dish called gravelax? Which fish is the traditional ingredient of the Scandinavian dish called gravelax? Now, um, regular players of the quiz, uh, when we've been doing it in the pub, will know that Bear is often down in the quiz with me um he we got him a new toy today it's like a little treat thing with a uh, three little bottles and he has to spin it round and the treats drop out he's getting there so far he just uh, knocked the whole thing over in his defense it was empty and he was just in a strop question number 34 which vegetable when cooking it is a vegetable by definition. It's a berry and a fruit. Do Americans call eggplants? Which vegetable do Americans call eggplants? Um, <laughs> Alex's video is stuck. I'm pretty sure it's your screen because it's, it's, like, it's, it's going okay on to, to my side. Because while I... I I, I learned this a couple of weeks ago when um, we kept having issues with YouTube and um, the signal kept dropping out. So I, I always have the iPad um, next to me. Do I get an idea if it's uh, failing for everybody or just me? Number 35. What name is given to the Japanese dish of thinly sliced meat, vegetables and seasoning all cooked together quickly, usually at the table? What name is given to the Japanese dish of thinly sliced meat, vegetables and seasoning all cooked together quickly, usually at the table? Um, if you hear some strange noises in the background, it's uh, Bear and Gizmo are currently fighting over each other. I think it's playing, actually. To be fair, Gizmo would win. She's only a Yorkshire Terrier. She'd win. Number 36. Which vegetables popular in Chinese dishes are the bulb-like stems of the bulrush? Number 36. Which vegetables popular in Chinese dishes are the bulb-like stems of the bulrush? Can you, can you hear him, like, just making noises in the background? <laughs> Number 37, if you were offered a choice between Brick, Dunlop or Excelsior, what type of food would you have been offered? 
If you were offered a choice between Brick, Dunlop and Excelsior, what type of food would you have been offered? Can't eat tires. <laughs> Bear doesn't know he doesn't have indigestion. Um, he he was just rolling himself on the floor, going, "Oh, that's a good itch. Oh yeah, oh just that's the spot." Um, yeah, Brick Dunlop or Excelsior? They are not tires. Number thirty-eight. Which meat is traditionally eaten in the USA on the fourth of on the fourth Thursday in November? Which meat is traditionally eaten in the USA on the fourth Thursday in November? Question number 39. If you saw canard on a French menu, what type of meat would be on offer? If you saw canard on a French menu, what type of meat would be on offer? And question number 40. From which country did the dish chili con carne originate? From which country did the, did the dish chili con carne originate? And here's the recap of round four. Question number 31. What is the name of the Spanish soup? That is traditionally served cold. Number 32. What forms the base of the Indian dish raita? Number 33. Which fish is a traditional ingredient of the Scandinavian dish called gravelax? Number 34. Which vegetable do Americans call eggplants? Number 35. What name is given to the Japanese dish of thinly sliced meat, vegetables and seasoning all cooked together quickly, usually at the table? Number 36. Which vegetables popular in Chinese dishes are the bulb-like stems of the bulrush? Number 37. If you were offered a choice between brick, dunlop or excelsior, what type of food would you have been offered? Would you like a clue for that one? If you'd like a clue for question 37, you have until I get to question 40 to let me know. Question 37 uh, was Brick, Dunlop or Excelsior. Number 38, which meat is traditionally eaten on, in the USA on the 4th of Thursday in November? Not the 4th of July, which I keep trying to say. On the 4th Thursday in November. It's not one of my favourites. I like sweet potato though. Number 39. If you saw canard on a French menu, what type of meat would be on offer? Nom nom nom. And number 40. From which country did the dish chili con carne originate? So I'm assuming for that nobody would like a clue about brick, Dunlop or Excelsior. Oh, you had your chance. Here we go. Here are the answers. The cold soup is gazpacho. Gazpacho. Number 32 is yogurt. Number 33, gravelax is salmon. Number 34, an eggplant is an aubergine. Number 35, the uh, Japanese dish of thinly sized vegetables is sukiyaki. Number 36 is water chestnut. 37, they are cheeses. 
I think the only clue I could have given you would be something about the moon. I don't know. And number 38 is Turkey. Number 39 is a duck. And number 40 is the US of A. Fourth Thursday in November is Thanksgiving. And they would traditionally eat turkey. Although in my sister's household, it was probably more likely to be chocolate cake. Because it's also roughly around my nephew's birthday. So at the end of round four, your acquisit Harry are on 47 out of 50. They got another 10 out of 10 on that round. Is it me or is this round, this quiz far too easy this week? Oh, see, see normally, while I'm reading the questions, I realise my glass is empty and I start filling it off screen. Spin Doctor on 42 out of 50. Ooh, what is fears? Spin Doctor, 42 out of 50. And slipping back into the third place with 40 points are the twerps, which takes us into tonight's fifth and final round. Scrabble. I'm going to show you five questions with questions, five questions, with a word. The word at the top is the letters that you have to use for this week's, this week's Scrabble round. Just put, just put my teeth in. So you'll have all five questions, then we'll go to the next five and use the same letters. And you need to form the answers to the questions based on the letters uh, that I'm showing you. And this week, just for fun, I didn't tell you how many letters there were in each one. So here we go. This week's word is Euphoria. Also a Eurovision winning song. Euphoria. So while we're doing this, I will try to uh, let you know how many letters there are in each answer. Question number 41. A dramatic work set to music for singers and instrumentalists. There are five letters in that answer, all of them in the word euphoria. To fair, this is the quick fire round. Number 42. The currency which replaced the national currencies of France, Germany and others in 2002. That only has four letters. Number 43. Developed to the point of readiness for harvesting and eating. That's four letters. Number 44. An untidy collection of objects pla uh, placed haphazardly on top of each other. And number 45, a twist, a length of thick, strong cord by twisting together strands of a material, four letters. Number forty-one, a dramatic work of um, dramatic, a dramatic work set to music for singers and instrumentalists. Five letters. Number forty-five. Uh, number forty-two, the currency which replaced the national currencies of France, Germany, and others in two thousand and two. Four letters. Forty-three, developed to the point of readiness for harvesting and eating. Four letters. Number forty-four, an untidy collection of objects placed haphazardly on top of each other. Four letters. 
And uh, a th number 45, a length of th thick, strong cord made by twisting together strands of a material. Ah, and part two, question number 46, getting very confused here. Number 46, the basic monetary unit of Indonesia with... Oh, no, hang on, wait, wait, nah! No cheating, Stay, don't look at the screen, don't look at the screen, don't look at the screen, look away from the screen, don't look at the screen, don't look at the screen, look at the screen. ah! Oh, there we go, no one saw that, did they? 46, the basic monetary unit of Indonesia... Six letters, not five, six. Six letters for number 46. No one saw that, right? That, just between me and Bear, wasn't it? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't go out live. No, surely. Number 47. Any of the fine thread-like strands growing from the skin of humans. Four letters. Number 48. Harvest the crop that you sowed. Four letters. I feel like I've just ruined this week's quiz. I don't know. Let's try harder. Number 49. Bubbly chocolate bar made by Nestle. Four letters. To be fair, me panicking and telling you not to look at the screen probably made you look at the screen. Just don't tell me, okay? Number 50. Second oldest of the Marx Brothers. Four letters. That's not. It's not four letters. It's five letters. <sighs> ah, dear. Every week I go through, I think, right, that's it. I'm happy with this. I've not made any mistakes. And what do I do? I make mistakes. Second oldest of the Marx Brothers with five letters. Look, it says five. It always says five. I mean, four. <laughs> Who said it said four? Yeah. Right, I'm going to give you uh, 41 to 45 again, just in case you missed some. You probably didn't, but I'm going to do it anyway. Just quickly, 41, a dramatic work, a set to music for singers and instrumentalists, five letters. 42, the currency which replaced the national currencies of France, Germany and others in 2002, four letters. Oh, it's five in the first one. 43, developed to the point of readiness for harvesting and eating, four letters. 44, an untidy collection of objects placed haphazardly on top of each other, four letters. Number 45, a length of thick, strong cord made by twisting together strands of material, four letters. Number 46, the basic monetary unit of Indonesia with six letters. Number 47, any of the fine thread-like strands growing from the skin of humans, four letters. 48, harvest the crop that you sowed, four letters. Number 49, bubbly chocolate bar made by Nestle. Available in milk, chocolate and mint. I think they do an orange one. And number 50, second oldest of the Marx Brothers with five letters. Right, I think you may have had long enough with those questions. I'm going to show you the answers. This is the first time you've seen them all evening. Number 41, a dramatic work set to music for singers and instrumentalists is an opera. One point. 42, the currency that replaced the national currency of France, Germany and others was the euro. The, number 43, developed to the point of readiness for harvesting and eating is ripe. An untidy collection of objects placed on, haphazardly on top is an heap. A thick of a length of thick strong cord made by twisting together strands of a material is four letters is rope. Number forty six, the rupiah is the monetary unit of Indonesia. The thread like strands growing from the skins of humans is hair. You should reap what you sowed. The Nestle chocolate bar is an arrow. And the second oldest of the Marx brothers with five letters, not four. Who said four? Was Harpo. 
How did you do, twerps? Did you get 10 out of 10 on that one? You're a quizzed, Harry. Got 57 out of 60 in total. I think this is the first quiz I've ever done where it's actually been this, the right number of points for the night, right number of questions. You requested how you didn't see the, uh, it was just at my end, wasn't it? That accidental, uh, display of, um, information. Surely. 52 out of 60 for the spin doctor and the twerps. Did you manage to stay in the same position? Did you get 10 out of 10? Are you on 50 out of 10? 50 out of 10? 50 out of 60? No! 49! Oh, yes. No, what are you talking about? Answers? I wouldn't show you the answers in, in, by mistake, surely. That wouldn't be my quiz. It's a well-oiled machine here. Well-oiled. Yeah. Right. Just to recap, in first place, you're a quizzed Harry with 57 out of 60, followed by the Spin Doctor with 52, and bringing up the rear, winning this week's Wooden Spoon are the Twerps with 49 out of 60. That's not too shabby. I mean, to be fair, last week the losing points, Team Not A Clue, who were lurking in the background, only got 43, and that was out of well over 60. You know what, you're acquitted, Harry. I think you beat your score. You had 54 last week. 57. Only three more, Paul. You increase the same by next week. And I only ask 60 questions. You will be 100 percenters. It's like the reverse of pointless. Anyway, that brings me to the end of this week's quiz. And I would like to say thank you very much for joining me, keeping me company, watching me make a complete balls up of the quiz. Again. I I'd like... I'd like to say I try I, I do try. I do try so hard to get this right. One day I will. And when I, when I perfect it, that will be when I will stop. I think that's fair. But up until then, just try, try, and try again. Now, before I leave you, I'd like to leave you with this little uh, Shakira-inspired musical number. And say thank you very much for joining me. And I hope to see you again next week. Good night. You're so savage. Oh. Klasse im Budget, im Budget. Sasse im Muri, im Naste. Denkst du, wir gehen mit Wasser, gehen mit Wasser. You're so savage. Oh. Da 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 da.